Hey guys, welcome back to Wacky Engineering, and in today's video, we're going to start doing some programming with this RS Logics Micro. The three instructions that we're going to be going over today are the examine if closed, the examine if open, and the output energize instructions. If we look over here at the trainer, we can see our MicroLogix 1000, and we have our RS-232 to USB converter uh, plugged in here at the PLC, and then the other USB end is plugged in at the computer. And here back on the screen with the RS Logix Micro, we are going to start a new project. We're going to click on the MicroLogix 1000 and hit OK. And we're going to make sure we have um, communications. So we'll click on Go Online Who Active, and we'll click on our driver here. And there is our MicroLogix 1000, so we can see it. The first quick thing we're going to talk about is the way this program works. And you have rungs that go across. And we can add, we've got to click here, we can add rungs. And these are what the different instructions are going to sit on. And then that's what the code is going to execute across. So at this point, we have rungs that we can add instructions to, and we're going to talk about this instruction first, which is the examine if closed. So we're just going to click on it and drag it down, and it has a question mark here. So what this instruction is wanting is it's wanting you to address it, um, which in this case, we're going to address it to an input from the PLC. So the inputs are for different things like uh, buttons and switches and different sensors. Uh, so in this case, these push buttons that are here on the trainer are going to be wired to the inputs. And this very first button is input zero. So we want to address that input to the PLC so that it knows to correspond with this instruction. And we're going to do that by just typing simply I and then colon zero forward slash zero. And if you hit enter on that, we're just going to put push button. This is just like a label. Uh, you don't have to put anything there if you don't want to. Um, and all this is really doing is it's addressing it to input zero of the PLC. And if I were to download this program and then poke this button, um, the PLC would see that button get pressed. So basically voltage is going to that input. And then the PLC would close this instruction, which would then pass logic from this side of the instruction to this side of the instruction. Um, the next instruction we're going to go over is output energize. And in this case, we're going to use this for this light right here. And this is wired up to output zero on the PLC. And it's just simply uh, power going in and then power going out to this light. So if the PLC wants to turn this light on, all it has to do is close the contact on output zero. So we're going to do kind of the same um, scheme here. It's going to be O colon zero forward slash zero. And we're just going to say light. So at this point, if we were to try to download this program, it's going to fail. Um, and I'm going to show you why real quick. We're going to check verify project here. And it's going to tell us that there's errors. And it says rung one error. Rung has no instructions. And that's talking about this rung. So we have another rung here that has nothing on it. And it doesn't like that. So we're just going to click on it and hit delete. And now if we verify, it's good. So real quick, we're going to just go straight into downloading this. And we're going to see how this works. So once again, we have push button one wired in 24 volts into here. And then we have uh, these 24 volt lights that are wired up to the outputs and output zero corresponds to this light. And with this program, if we push this button, you can see on screen that it lights up green. And that's because it closed this instruction, which passes now logic from here to here. And if it makes it here, it's just a straight line across to this output. 
And so essentially this program is telling the, um, or the PLC, the program is basically, if you see this input go high, I want you to turn on this output, which in this case is a light. <clears throat> and if I poke the button again, which will turn the button off, then all it does is turn off the light. So that's pretty simple. Um, we're going to do a little bit more, a little bit of repetition, um, so you might be able to understand it a little better. So we're going to go offline, and I'm going to add two more rungs, and I'm going to simply do the same thing again with a different input. At this point, we're going to go input colon zero forward slash three. That's input three, and input three is going to correspond with button four. Um, so button one, the first push button, is, is the address input zero zero. That's where it's physically wired. This one is input zero one, input zero two, input zero three. So the fourth button is going to correlate to input zero three and we're going to drag another output down here and we're just going to put output zero two and this is going to be light three and once again that light three doesn't have to be there um, in fact let's just delete that so now it has no description but it's still going to work just the same and you'll see that here in a second and we are going to talk about the next instruction which is examine if open and this instruction is simply the exact opposite of this instruction and this instruction. What this one does is it is going to pass the logic all the time until it sees its input address go high. Uh, so if we do like input 0, 1, and we can call this push button 2, and then we drag another output down here and we'll do output zero three for this one and I'm just picking these at random we could do any ones we want you you have a lot of flexibility um, your hard wiring is going to remain the same we would have to physically change wires if we wanted to change which one of these buttons and which one of these lights corresponds to which input or output but as far as inside the program I can address it however I want, so I'm just kind of picking these randomly. Um, this is just another light, so we'll just name it light. Um, so if we verify this project, it's going to check out. So if this line here, if you push button 4, which is input 3, so if input 0, 3 goes high, it's going to pass the logic over to this output and then it's going to turn output 0, 2 on. This one, if you aren't pushing the button, so if this input is not high, it is going to pass the logic and turn this light on. And then if you push the button, it's actually going to turn the light off. So it just does the exact opposite of this one. So let's go ahead and download it and let's see what that looks like. And we're going to change back to run mode and then we also want to go online so that we can see on the screen here what's happening. So once again we're going to poke the first button to see this first line and if I poke it it turns on, it turns on the output and the light turns on. Now ironically this button was already pushed so push button 2, this is the first one, this is the second one this one was already pushed and that's why this light's not on but if I unpress it now you can see that when this is not pressed our light is on uh, and then this is just another instance of this one so if I push button 4 now it turns on so that's pretty cool um, that's the basics um, we're going to go into more depth and we're going to reuse some of these instructions in the very next video. So if you didn't fully understand this, I'll try to explain it in a slightly different way in the next video. And then we're also going to add on uh, a little bit more complexity and add in another type of instruction. So 
Um, if you thought this video was informational, if you learned something from it, please like, subscribe, hit the alert button. And in the next video, we're going to move on. Thanks for watching.